you know, don't wait till it's too late. Yeah. You know, you have yeah. to be bold. You have to be brave. Whatever the outcome, outcome is, if you're getting out of a gang or if it's a drug, whether it's alcohol, whether yeah. it's porn, whatever it is, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You have to be the one willing to finally be like, you know what, I got some help. Yeah. You know, like I yeah. have to make a change in my life. Hey there, and welcome to another episode in Freedom Story Media's series called Freedom Storytellers, where we are all about trying to tell stories that inspire you to live a life of freedom and joy. Hopefully, that's the result of today's episode. Enjoy. Hey, you guys, we are here with my brother Chewy, and we are going to have a great conversation. We're going to get into a little bit of his story. Um, trust me, it's going to be inspiring, encouraging, challenging, and pretty fun. So I want to introduce you guys to my brother Chewy, who is the uh, director of the Frontline Street Intervention and a bunch of other stuff. So I'll let you go ahead and introduce yourself a bit more thoroughly. So tell everybody a little bit about who you are. Well, who I am, um, my name's Jesus, but everybody in the Spanish culture, most Jesus is named are Chewy. So my mom gave it, but I'm a little chubby now, I've been chubby. So they just call me Chewy, like Chewy gum now. So nice. it stuck with me. Um, yeah. G give us in, in a nutshell, um, a little bit about your uh, family and kind of, uh, I mean, we'll get into a lot right. of the deep stuff. Well, uh, my family, I got my mom. I was raised with my mom, my sister, my brother ended up going with his dad. Um, I was raised Catholic. You know, I was uh, going to get my communion, the communion thing they do. And um, so I was brought up of what I thought was, you know, Jesus, God, and um, growing up as a child, man. And so I always had a small family. Um, so I wanted to make a family, you know, eventually, and I uh, met a beautiful woman, Amy, and uh, we ended up, we've been together 16 years and married, what, 13? She's going to get mad at me, I don't remember, <laughs> but uh, we got four kids, 15-year-old boy, 9-year-old daughter, uh, Jayla Jr. is the oldest, 15, and the twins, Jason, Jasmina, they're five now, um, a handful, That's a right. handful to have them. That's why I came here to do yeah, it. I know. And not in my own house, because it wasn't going to work out, <laughs> you know, um, but yeah, um, and like I said, uh, uh, just a beautiful, I got a beautiful family, you know? Like, yeah, um, yeah, you do. You're blessed. The wife lets me do what I'm able to do, you know, even though she's not like outgoing and all that. Yeah. She lets me, she's like, do what you have to go do, you know? So for that's example, cool. For example, that's yeah. awesome, man. So uh, in these conversations, and you're the first yeah. of many, yeah. so I'm so excited that you could be the first interview. <laughs> yeah. Um, we're going to talk a lot about your freedom story. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I'm really going to be hoping to hear a bit about that. But before we get into the freedom story, yeah. let's talk about what life was like in bondage or in chains. Mm -hmm. However you would however you would describe uh, that. That's a good one. Um, I remember uh, before, right when I was becoming a believer, I would listen to the Chris Tomlin, My Chains Are Gone, the road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, it's his uh, version of Amazing Grace. Yes, I think. Yeah, yes, that yeah. one. And that one would break me down. Mm -hmm. Like, I was a tough guy, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And when I would listen to that song, it just put me in tears. Yeah. And, uh, because so let's hear about the tough guy. The, yeah. Oh, the tough guy. <laughs> I'll share a little bit of the tough guy, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, you know, growing up, I was bullied, you mm -hmm. know? Um, I was bullied as a kid. Uh, bad things happened to me as a kid. And as I grew older, I wanted to be able to defend myself, uh, learn how to fight. Uh, and that's what happened. You know, I, I learned how to fight. I, I learned uh, to stick up for myself. I ended up, actually, I was real skinny growing mm -hmm. up. So I was like, man, I'm little. You know, so I decided to eat more to get bigger. And I got big. And the, the kids that would bully me, I ended up being able to fight back and beat mm -hmm. them up to where they wouldn't bully me no more. And um, I grew up in, a, and as people would say, in a ghetto area, in yeah. the Foxy Apartments. Um, and there, like, you would look out your window, people shooting dice out there music pounding all night, you know, mm -hmm. and man, became, there was my family out there, you know, um, but uh, at the same time, um, when we talk about like bondage and so right away, that's when it started sinking in, like you, you see that lifestyle, you're like, man, that's cool, they got cars, they got wads of money, mm -hmm. they, you know, they got family, you know, a sense of family, security, right. and I was like, man, I want that, you know what I mean, I, maybe I'll never get hurt again if mm -hmm. I could be a part of something like that, you know, mm -hmm. and I just remember that, like I was a good kid playing baseball. And uh, I used to be on a, it was an Indian team, you know? Now I'm not an Indians fan, by all means. Uh, now they're Guardians. <laughs> but anyways, um, and I just remember it all happened. One day I was coming home from school and uh, from, from, a, from a baseball game. And uh, there was a guy in the top of the stairs and he's just like, hey, uh, 
He's like, what's up, shorty? I always see you around here, you know? Mm. And I was like, and he was like, my name's Gonzo, you know? And I was like, oh, what's up? My name's Chewy. And he was like, hey, why don't you come on over one day, you know what I'm saying? I'm right there. And that apartment that he pointed at, which I knew who they were, were uh, Latino uh, people. Mm. And they just stuck together. They mm. didn't associate like with the whites and the blacks in the neighborhood right mm. there. So I knew by the way they were different. Right. Like, you know, that they didn't get along or they were just different. They stayed mm. away from each other. And yeah, so one night I just, I was, well, like 14 years old, 13 years old. I snuck out. Um, I snuck out of my house and I went over there and knocked on the door and boom, smoke. A lot of smoke came out, you know, mm. and they had music. And they're like, come in. He was like, come in, come in, man. And I, I walked in and they were all smoking weed and drinking. The girls were on their laps, you know, mm. then on the table, there was guns, mm. you know, and I'm like, damn, I was like, what is, what is this? You know, I'm not, there was, you know, guns I seen on TV, you know what I mean? Yeah. But now this I'm is like a whole another thing, world, a whole yeah. different dimension now, you know? And he's like, the, the girls are like, hey, you want some? You want to smoke? You want to drink it? And I was like, no, at first I said no, you know, and he was like, man, come on, get, you know, and so then I took my first pull of weed and started smoking and, you know, that's what the bondage really kicked in then, you know. Yeah, yeah. And How I, old like, were you at this I point? I was like, four, maybe 14, 13, wow, 14, okay. um, and I would just go there every night, every mm -hmm. day now. Instead of sneaking out, I would just go in there through the day. Right. I'd get out of school and i go straight there now, you know, mm -hmm. um, and that's where it began, you know, that, he was a Latin king that mm -hmm. I, later on I came to find out, um, and... In my area where I was at was Vice Lords and GDs, Four Corner Hustlers, Black Stones. Mm -hmm. So it was predominantly black gangs. Right, right. And majority of my friends that are white and Latinos ended up turning into those black gangs, you know, that were there. Right, right. Uh, me, I wandered off, you know what I mean? And met this brother and I just love their lifestyle. I love that yeah. nobody liked them. You know now was this was this all in the Round Lake area? No, this was this in Carpentersville when it began. Oh, yeah, okay, Carpentersville. You know, yeah, and uh so that's where that's exactly where it began though. Um, he ended up getting caught with a 12 gauge shotgun and some other stuff. And because I knew him and they always seen us together, they kicked me out of the apartments too. Mm -hmm. So mind you, like I have nowhere to go, nowhere to live. Uh, and this just shows you, man, like the gang culture, the gang lifestyle, the bondages to gangs are everywhere right now. Yeah. You know, it's not like it's just in Carpentersville. Right. I ended up moving to Elgin with my brother at his house and same thing. My cousin was a king from out there in Elgin. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, you're a king. I was hanging out with the King Buzz over here. Over here in Hanover, Hanover Park, too. He was, you know, hanging out with them. Um, and just got mixed in with them out there, you know, and started hanging out with my cousin, got in trouble in school, um, was doing all the drugs again, you know. Mm -hmm. My brother, uh, I used to borrow his car. I called it borrowing. He said I stole it. But I would borrow him when he'd go to work. Borrow without his permission. Yes. For, yeah. You know, and uh, so, yeah, the gang culture is from Elgin, from Carpentersville to Elgin. And then um, he kicked me. He didn't kick me out, but I left, mm -hmm. you know. And then I, my, my mom got a place out here in Round Lake. And that's really where it began, began, mm -hmm. um, was I was already a bad, going, growing to be a bad kid. Um, and my household, my mom, she worked a lot, so she never really had time. She tried her best, you know, mm -hmm. like I can't knock her. Um, but with no father, like she, my real dad left when I was a kid. My mom, uh, well, my mom left, she's a long story, you know. She, my mom left him, and then my stepdad raised me, which I call him my real dad. Um, so we moved to Brown uh, Lake, and things were good, uh, right here in Rosewood. Yeah. Um, and things were good, man. But I went to school. First day was first week of school. I began to a fight mm -hmm. to prove myself. You know? I was just gonna ask, like, uh, is there like the <laughs> sense of like now I need to like mark yes. who I am in this but space? Right away, I was smart to focus who was who. Mm -hmm. Where I was, right away was where the Lion Kings at. Mm -hmm. I know there. I met. I went to Car I went to Carswell, Went to Elgin. You know where are the Lion Kings at out here now? You know, bam, right away, they, I found them right away. So you needed to yeah, find I, your people. Yes. Like, yeah. And yeah. Then once I scoped out who they were, I went up to them, talked to them, hey, what's up, Chewy? You know, from over here and over there. All right, cool. And then I just became friends with them. You know, mm -hmm. we bonded, we became brothers, and um, it went from, okay, now go go beat this kid up in, in, in the lunchroom, go beat this kid up, you know, to show if I was down, you know? Right, right, right. Um, and I did. I went to the cafeteria, you know, beat dude up. Um, and, and that, that, that's how it began out here in Round Lake. But it wasn't short after that. And how, wait, how old were you at that point? At that time, I was 15. Oh, oh so not yeah, too long after yeah, Carpenter's uh, Village. I was 15, you know, and um, uh, the same thing. Got in trouble in school. Um, just, yeah, I was just a bad kid, you know, yeah. uh, misguided. And like, man, when you get bonded, when we speak of bondage, uh, you know, that culture is there. The drugs are there. The girls yeah. are there. Uh, and what you think, and I'm saying all the brothers are bad, but... Obviously, when you come older, you'll see who's the, the good ones in the bad Yeah, ones. yeah. But, um, you know, it's the lifestyle that blinds you. Yeah, you know, I was just going to ask. So what were some of the the messages or 
Yeah, yeah. maybe the messages is the way yeah. I want to ask it. That you were receiving from them. Yeah. That you weren't receiving right. elsewhere that you really wish you To be you honest, had. it was the love. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, when they do certain handshakes and they do certain um, things, it's love. You know what I mean? Mm. Um, it's street love. It's the brotherly love. that, And they take you with open arms. And there you have security. Mm. So, like, when I was getting beat up as a kid, if they would have been there when I was a kid, that would have never happened. Right, you know what right. I mean? So you had, like, like a sense of protection. Yes. and the protection comes was, with it. Yeah. Um, as you, as I, obviously, as I got older and I got into trouble... I went away at a very young age. Yeah. I went to prison. I went to juvenile prison. Um, and there, you mind you, a 15-year-old kid get eight and a half years, mm. you know. Um, wow. You have that protection out in jail. You got eight and a half years. Yeah, they gave me eight and a half years. I was 15. Wow. You know, um, they... Did you, got, did you serve at all? Uh, no. Okay. What it is, is they give you 50... Back then, it was 50%. Okay. So you do half of eight years. And uh, so I was 15. And when I caught that case, my mom had moved to Crystal Lake. Uh, from Round Lake, because I got kicked out of Rosewood too. Mm. So my mom moved to Crystal Lake, and I was staying at my brother Pancho. Remember, I spoke about him before. Uh, his mom took me in mm. uh, here in Washington, and that's where I was at. You know, that's where I grew up. That's where I was at. Um, so I, I was homeless. You know, I had nowhere to go. Uh, I was wearing his clothes all the time. You know, um, but yeah, my mom went to Crystal Lake, and you know, I smiled about it now. But I was such a foolish kid. Mm. I always wanted to help and protect people. Yeah. You know, so I, when I went out there, these guys. That weren't in the gangs or nothing, but they were getting bullied by opposition gangs that I didn't like already. Right. So right then I started, you know, getting to know them. Uh, I became the friend, became the brother, and then, as it said, you know, I took care of business for them, mm. and that business taken care of allegedly, as I always say when I speak, uh, gave me they sentenced me, they charged me with aggravated arson, mm. uh, which meant that aggravated was meant meaning that I knew people were in the house and we tried to burn it. Mm. You know, and that they gave me, they found me guilty. They gave me eight and a half years. Um, so mind you, now I'm, uh, you know, I remember my last court date when I was born getting sentenced for that case. Um, just imagine being 15 and hearing your mom screaming and crying. Yeah, like, she's never gonna see her baby, you know. Yeah. And I thought I was gonna be in it for the rest of my life because right. I was a knucklehead, I didn't care. Right. Um, but yeah, I, I ended up getting a sentence and I went to the juvenile halls and St. Charles, you know, juvenile prison, St. Charles. And people are like a lot of people laugh and they don't even speak about it. But like, dude, it was like a straight gladiators. Mm. Like, you know, I'm going through and right away you're getting disrespected by an opposition gang. You know, like it's just a war zone. You know, yeah. uh, but you learn, you grow, and plus, a good thing I know how to fight by then. Yeah. You know, because obviously the not being bullied no more. Um, and it's just dominancy, man. You know, when you're when you're like being a Latin king, speaking of it, because that's what I was. Um, they're very dominant. They're lions. Mm -hmm. You know, they consider themselves lions. They consider um, to ride in a pack. Yeah. And even even if you're by yourself, you be you're a lion, and when you're with your, with your pack, you're even stronger, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's the mentality. That's the the bondage that you get wrapped in your brain, and that um, that they teach you, and that you learn, and uh, yeah. So you're you're in you're in juvie yeah. uh, for years, um, and then I'm I'm imagining once you got out, so you said you got half time, so that's what around nineteen. Four years, yeah. I was supposed to do four years, but I didn't tell you the parts where I was fighting in there that they gave me more. Oh, time. so you got extended. I got time. an extra year, and I got an extra three months. Okay, okay. That they gave me for fighting. So your early twenties <laughs> when you get out. Years, yeah, I had a twenty going to be twenty one. Okay, yeah. So somewhere in in your twenties, yeah. I mean, you're still going on this journey. You're yes. still still struggling with, yeah. You know, um, your your bondage, yeah. to, to the gang life. Um, not to fast forward over any significant moments. Yeah, because there's so much. I know there's a, I'm sure there's a lot. Yeah, like, I'm sure there's like <laughs> probably another 15 years yeah. of of uh, of struggle in there. Um, walk us closer, maybe not all the way, but yeah. walk us closer to um, maybe where you're. Maybe tell us. Maybe tell us about that. Maybe tell us about your rock bottom. Yeah. Like what 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 was like the lowest and the place where you were like, okay. To maybe help do me something push different. Push towards a believer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that wasn't till when we met was what 2013. Yeah. Um, and so that, that was so that was literally that that because yes. you were so when yes. we met you were still yes. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. You were maybe thinking yeah. possibly yes. Okay. So go ahead. Um, fast forwarding. Um, between the fast forward part though, mm -hmm. I had went back to prison. Oh, you know, okay. what I'm saying a couple more times, one more time, and then did two counting times. But during those times that I went back, and this is what will lead into it, is, yeah. you know, at that time, I didn't know who God was. I, I thought I did because I would go to church as a sure. Catholic, and I was, you know, 
during my prison time, though, people from the streets, churches, women, men would come on Sundays. Mm. And I would go to service. Sometimes it would be to do game meetings and meet other people from other areas and send messages to other units, you know? Right, right. But a lot of times, like, some of the women were speaking truth. Right, I didn't know what right. their truth was at that time. Sure, sure. Uh, but now I know. Now being a believer, I, mean, I understand. It makes sense. God yeah. put those people in our path yeah. at that time. Yeah. You know? Um, and I just remember leading to the last one in 2013, uh, uh, something that God revealed to me. And mind you, I've read the Bible before, uh -huh. and I've always called home, I'm going to change, I'm going to change. Sure. But it never happened. Yeah. You know? Because it, it was time, always you thinking about it and you yes. wanting to, yes. but a change hadn't and happened. The rock bottom yeah. happened is when. You love and you trust people so much mm. and you keep getting betrayed. Mm. You know, like I never yeah. once ratted on my brothers. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And every time that something happened or a case occurred, I was always being testified against. I was mm. always being written statements on, you know, and I was the one always doing jail time. So that love that yes. draw, drew you in and, and was seeming so attractive, now you're seeing some of the... The holes yes. in it and wow, yes. it's not actually right. it's not what I the thought, real it was love gonna be. thought it was going to be. Yeah. You know, yeah. and um, and like I said, there's still a lot of good brothers. You know, sure. I mean? like I still talk to a lot of good guys, man. And I try to just show them and teach them, and you know, have them stay away from it. Long story, another one. Anyways, yeah. But you know, when I started to realize, man, was you know, like, is this what I want to do the rest of my life? You mm -hmm. know, like I had a four year old son. And I'm still out there game banging, getting tattoos on my hand. You know what I'm saying? Right. Because I love it. Look, I got the RL for Round Lake. To, you know, to show the world, I was proud of my area where I was from. Mm. Um, and just a betrayal. And I was like, man, how many more times am I gonna let this happen? Mm -hmm. You know? I said, there's got to be something different. This is not what I want to do the rest of my life. Uh, and then, man, I just started reading the Word in the mm. cell too. You know what I mean? Um, I know a lot of brothers out there that are incarcerated. That's where their rock bottom is, and that's where they meet. Right. The Lord, you know what I'm right. saying? Right. The Lord is there, man. He's always been there. Yeah, just yeah. Well, he's, and now he's finally got you yes. in a place where you're able to slow yes. down and look and, and listen. And like, when, you, when you're able to realize, like, man, I remember this. And I remember that. Because there was a time that, you know, we fast forwarded, but there was a time when I got sentenced to those eight and a half years as a 15-year-old kid. Uh -huh. I wouldn't consider myself atheist, and I wouldn't, but I didn't believe in God, period, mm -hmm. because I prayed. And you know, you and I still got sentenced to eight and a half right, years. Right, right, right. So I said, "What kind of God do I want to serve? Mm. That is it gonna, you know, get me out of jail? You know, right. and like, when being honest, I called God every bad word in the book mm. that you could think of. You know, Jesus, any bad word. I don't even know who Jesus was, anyways, at that time. But I called him bad words too. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, there's something so powerful in what you just said there, though, because when you said that, you're like, "What kind of God won't want to get me out of jail?" Mm. And like. What's actually beautiful is the kind of God that wasn't trying to free you from that prison. Yes. Right? Yes. <laughs> he was trying to free you from a greater oh, oh, prison, yes. like the, the actual yeah, bondage that you were in. Yeah, exactly. Wow, that's deep. The spiritual yeah. bondage, you know what I mean? The, yeah. All of it, though. You know yeah. I mean? Like, all of it, you know? And like I said, again, I, I go back to you don't realize that because you're blind, you know totally. what I mean? Yeah. When you're blind, I said you're blind. <laughs> When you're blind, you know, you don't see. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? And um, yeah, I remember just reading the word and reading the word. And uh, in jail, a lot of people, and I'm not knocking brothers that are locked up that change while they're in jail. Yeah. But a lot of them do it because they're scared. Right. You know, right. It's like when you're obligated to a mob, an organization, there's things you have to do still, you mm -hmm. know? So what I had said when I was in there and I told the brothers is when I go home, I'm done. Mm. I'm going to retire. I'm going to drop my flag. You know what I'm saying? And I'm going to give my life to Jesus. No, nah, you crazy, brother. You crazy, brother. You know, Chewy, you tripping, brother. You know? I was like, no, that's what I'm going to do. But I'm not going to do it here because I don't want to be one of those people that just do it in jail. Right. You know? So when I go home, things are going to be different. And mind you, I said it before. Sure. I never went through with it, you know? Um, but yeah, man, that was my rock bottom, man. Being betrayed so many times was the rock bottom of God opening my eyes to show me you know, your friends are not who you think they are. Yeah. You know what I yeah, mean? Like, totally. Um, um, so, yeah, that, that was just something that pierced my heart, you know? And then the love. When you hear, like, you know, as I remember, and I remember the women speaking, like, Jesus loves you. You know, mm -hmm. he set you free. You know, he can set you free. Believe. All you have to do is believe, you know? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, believe, you know what I'm saying? Believe, uh, 
like what you know what right, I'm saying? right 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 so it was confusing but uh, like i said it was learning like you knew there was a direction you just weren't quite sure yes. what it was yeah. and how that worked yeah. so now now let's let's get to the 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 setting free that the, yeah. the the moment or the season of life where the lord is actually really writing that freedom story and you're yeah. beginning to experience freedom well um before i forget something i want to add the uh, you know, during my time of in and out of jail, mm -hmm. uh, I did become the leader of the game. Okay. So as I became the leader, I was very dominant. I was very mean. Like when I tell, I, I've said this to the G Life kids before, and I was like, man, I've had kids your guys' ages doing what I wanted them to do for me, mm -hmm. and they're ha 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 yeah, but you would have been ha 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 me at that time. Right, you know? right. Like right, I right. had an army, you know, I built an army. So basically, where where it all began is honestly was you know when I came home, um, I was like. Somehow, I have to tell the mom that I don't want to be a brother anymore, you know? Mm -hmm. Most people that get out of gangs get beaten bad. Mm -hmm. You either get sent to the hospital, you can, you can die, you know? Um, some people have run and hide. You know, my cousin, things went bad between him and the guys, and uh, they ended up shooting at him and killed his son mm -hmm. in Elgin, you know? So I was like, man, I never want to be in that position, you know, to where right. something would happen to me or my family. Um, so... Yeah, so that, that was a little fast forwarding it up, you know, but I remember just coming home and I was like, man, I had to get plugged in somewhere. I have to be willing to change my lifestyle in order for things to be different. Yeah, yeah. So my sister was inviting me to, um, at that time was Torch. Um, that was the Regal one, right? That's what it was. Yeah, the Torch, Regal, right? yeah. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, I just remember hearing Carter speak and I was, you know, it was real dark, so it was cool. Yeah, so yeah. I was like, I broke down, you know, and uh, really what really triggered and pierced me the most was Mama Powers. Yeah. You know, like this little Peruvian little lady. I didn't know who she was at that time. You know, and she just comes up to me and grabs my hands. And she was like, God is going to do something amazing in your life, mijo. Yeah. You know, I'm like, well, why is this lady calling me her son? You know, <laughs> me like, she don't even know me. Yeah. You know, she's like, you're going to see. She's like, I don't know what it is, but you're going to see what God does to you in your life. You know what I mean? Mm. She's like, I know it. You watch. And that, man, that just sent my whole mind like, like, and I'm not going to lie, when I went, to church service of the day, yeah. I had a pistol. Mm -hmm. I had drugs in my pocket. Wow, wow! You know, I even had my hat. If I remember, I had my hat still cocked to the left. Sure. You know, I'm in a jersey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and I was like, man, this little lady. Who is this little lady, yo? That just came up to me like yeah. that. Come to find out, her name is Carmen, like my mama. Oh. You know, okay. what are the chances of that? Right, right, right. You know, and uh, I don't know. I just the boldness that she showed me that day and. Like, no fear. Yeah. She didn't care how big I was. Yeah. She didn't care the tattoos. A lot of times people judge you by your tattoos mm -hmm. when you go into a church setting. Right. And that culture, you know what I'm saying? They're like, a lot of, they, I've seen people, church people look at me crazy. Right. They still look at me crazy. Like, what are you doing here? Yeah, you know? What's going on here? What's but your... she looked beyond that. Yeah. You know? She looked at, this kid needs Jesus right yeah. now, you know? Something about him, God called her to me, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. To come to me. You know, and, and and I'm just gonna stop real quick, y'all. Y'all probably, if if you are in the church in any capacity, you know somebody similar. There's no one like Carmen Powers. She's a one of a kind. But you know somebody similar who just has like the spirit of God, like in a very profound way, walking with them. And when they speak, it's like with authority, and it's so beautiful yes. when it's in such a small and unassuming package. You know, when it's somebody yeah. that you would not yeah. expect, no. and it's just like, boom. Yeah. She's one of those people that just brings us yes. a spiritual weight. And that's what the people is, should be, you know. Absolutely, that's absolutely. That's what the people that should, should be like, yeah. you yeah. know. And, like, man, like, she just, like, I was just, I don't know. I went home, and I told I was telling Amy about it, and I was like, man, something, something crazy. Like, Amy just came <laughs> up to me, yo, you know. Like, it was weird. I felt something, you know. Yeah. Um, so then right working. there. I knew, like, okay, this is where I want to get plugged in. Mm. This is what um, I'm going to attend the church more and see how I feel. Uh, yeah. The next time I went, I didn't bring stuff with me, you know. I went in there, and um, they were starting groups, like, to join a group at a house, you know. Right, right. And I joined one. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. I joined one, and I remember joining I joined Andres, um, Carlos' husband. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I joined their group. I joined the shoppers group. But the shoppers group is where I really grew. Yeah. Because now... You have Mr. Shopper that is a whole different, he's grew up in that lifestyle, but also on the other side, though. Yeah. You yeah. know? And I'm like, dude, how can I be friends with this guy? You know what I'm saying? Like, there's no possible ways I can be friends with this dude, you know? 
He talked about being a probation officer. He wasn't. All right, right. Like, this is not going to work. <laughs> well, it worked. Yeah. God made that situation work. Yeah. And, like, he became my first mentor. Yeah. You know? And you guys are still tight to yeah. this day. Yeah, we're still. Yeah. I just helped him get this big pool table. You know? <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I just, you know, uh, but he was, he became my first mentor ever. Like, I didn't even know what a mentor was. Right. You right. know, and he discipled me, man. He was there. And, uh, like, there was, in the very beginning, when you don't even want to pray, mm. you're scared to pray. You know, you're like, oh, I don't want to say nothing. You know, like, uh, what if I say something wrong? And no, like he encouraged me. You have to just do it when you're ready and feel led. You'll just come to it, you yeah. know. But don't ever feel like you have to do it or you have to do too much. Right. Because I always right. thought you had to make the prayer look sound beautiful. Right. And a lot of people, a lot of people think they're like, oh, I don't know how to pray. What do you mean? You know how to talk? Just yeah. talk. And you he know? was just like, no. He's like, no, Chui, it's not like that, you know. Yeah. So yeah, that's what like, and so you have to get plugged in. I learned. Yeah. You know, you have to get plugged in, and that's what I did. I joined the group, and um, they were mentoring me, man. And that's when I knew at that time, like, these people here. That don't even know me are showing me a crazy unconditional love mm, you know yeah. what kind of love are you showing me you know what what you know i met you in the church you know yeah, what i'm saying yeah. and i like and ours was always like what's up man? how's it going yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Always saying? i'm like dude like why are these people like so kind you know what i'm saying like why i was excited like? when i saw you, you know <laughs> so i so i my i'm not going to go into my story so yeah. much but like I was always, and I didn't realize this, yeah. but I was always drawn to the people that looked like they were on the outside of things, yes. that didn't look like everybody right. else in, in the scenario. And I was just immediately yeah. drawn to that. So when I saw you, I'm like, yes, somebody who's <laughs> yeah. different, somebody who was really going to appreciate, right. you know, somebody being, yes. you know, engaging with them. Yes. So and that was you exciting. You were always too. awesome with me, you know yeah. what I mean? Like through the door, like even fast forwarding some, like when I was getting towards to get out the game. Mm. You know, I remember I told everybody, and I told George, and George just sent it through the wire to everybody, you know, <laughs> like, Chewie wants to get out, Chewie's going to go talk to the game, and, you know, was I scared? Yeah, of course you're going to be scared, you don't know what can happen, yeah. but, you know, I was like, you know what, I'm not a coward, just like how I went in, I'll go out, right, and right. I remember sitting down with you, me yeah. and you having a lunch, yeah. and you were like, can I go with you, yeah. can we go, I'm like, no, 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 I can't go, I'll hey, bro, I'll tell you, those were the happiest words I ever heard you say. <laughs> I felt like the Lord was calling me to like, yo, be bold yeah. and like go with this brother. Yeah. But like, I was so grateful yeah. when you yeah. said you didn't need me. Yeah. I was like, praise the Lord. Because yeah, I was, like, no, I was, like, <laughs> I was scared. Like, I'm like, I don't know well, nothing about that. You know, you go step <laughs> yeah, man, that's because that's, that's what the people got to do. You know, and like I said, it was, you know, when you're tied and you're bonded to something. I, I was a brother since I was, well, I know since I was 13 yeah. all the way until... I was what thirty three or something like that. I was I was you know um, yeah. still I was older, but I was like 32, 33 years old. I mean that was that was you know twenty thirteen like, was eight years ago. That's a tight bondage. Yeah. I mean, you grow, you breathe, you live this. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Like, I woke you know you wake up days living it, prison living it. You know what I mean? Like um, still at this stop. point, you've experienced more of that life yes. than you have of the free yes. life. You know exactly. So, you yeah. know? so that bondage is tight. You know. Yeah. But I just remember, like, you know, brother meeting you guys in the church and awesome brothers and sisters, man, that helped me along my way. Um, and then the time came. Yeah. You know, the time came and I was like, you know what? Uh, and this is where a lot of people struggle is, when should I do it? How should I do it? Right, You right. know, like, one is, is, I would never say it's never too late because obviously we can go whenever it's time, right. you know. But, you know, don't wait till it's too late. Yeah. You know, you yeah. have to be bold. You have to be brave. Whatever the outcome is outcome is if you're getting out of a gang or if it's a drug whether it's alcohol whether yeah. it's porn whatever it is you know what i'm saying yeah. you have to be the one willing to finally be like you know what enough's enough yeah you know like i yeah. have to make a change in my life yeah you know um, be finally ready to now I had a daughter too. Chains. you know yeah. so i had a daughter and a son yep. already yep. Now, you know um and yeah um i remember you know we go fast a little fast forward i remember just you know praying we were praying and i had my group with georgie and all mm -hmm. that and uh, Georgie was like scared and you know sad for me because we know what happened you know what I mean mm -hmm. like I've been I've done it to people when it was time for them to go I've hurt them you know what I mean mm -hmm. like I've had people hurt people you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. for that um, but yeah man we prayed and I was at a stage where I really wanted to believe who Jesus was you yeah. know like I've heard a lot of what he's done for us and um, who he was and um, the forgiveness and the mercy and i was like you know what man i was like and um i was just like yeah, it has to happen you know and um i i remember i remember lee getting ready at my house and uh why well, amy was scared 
you know, she was scared. She was like, man, babe, please don't do it, you know. And I was like, man, it has to be done. And uh, I, I was driving and I, I got over there and, um, you know, we get in a circle. And uh, one of the brothers already knew what I was going to do. Mm-hmm. And mind you, I had a lot of loyal brothers, you know. And he was trying to prolong it, you know. He was like, no, we'll talk about it another time. I said, no, we're going to speak about it. You know, and I was like, hey, brothers, I got something to say. And uh, he was trying to cut me off. And the brother, one by one of my good guys was like, man, let Chewie speak, you know. Chewie wants to speak, let him mm-hmm. speak. And I was like, oh, I'm going to speak regardless, you know what I mean? Because, mm-hmm. you know, I'm here. And I was just like, hey, look, brothers, man. I was like, I said, I've let you guys down. I was like, I have failed you guys. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? And they're looking at me crazy because I'm not their leader no more. Because mm-hmm. I went to jail again and I came home and I stepped down. Right. But I was still running the show, basically. Right, right. Because right. you've got all that, that respect. Yes. That, yeah. And I told them, I was like, I've led you guys wrong, man. I was like, forgive me, guys. And they're looking at me crazy, you know? And I was like, I was like, look, brothers, man. I was like, I've given you guys my whole life, you know? I've given you guys my whole life, man. And I was like, and every time something happens, I'm getting read and I'm getting told on. Mm. I was like, I can't let that happen no more to me, you know? I was like, I can't do this no more. I was like, I was like, the brother, I was like, y'all brothers have hurt me too much. You know what I mean? I've given you guys 110 percent of my life, you know. And uh, I was like, and now the time I was like, I'm giving my life to Jesus. I was like, I'm gonna surrender my life to Jesus. I was like, whatever you guys decide here to do to me today, I'll accept it. You know what I mean? I was like, I was like, but you ain't gonna change my heart, you know. Mm-hmm. And they looked at me crazy, you know, like, what the hell did you just say? You know, yeah, what I mean? yeah. is he saying he's gonna leave? You know? Yeah. And uh. I remember one of the brothers just come up to me and he was like, man, Chewie, that's the best, best thing I've ever heard you say. And then they all came up to me and hugged me. Oh, wow. You know? Wow. wow. And uh, I had tears, you know? And I was just like, yeah. Man. I was just like, man, I'm sorry, brothers. You know, I was like, look, I'm not turning my back on y'all. Yeah. I'm here in the hood. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I'm not leaving. You know, yeah. I come to y'all because I'm not a coward. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I, want, I, don't, I want y'all to know that if in the future you ever need help or guidance, yeah. reach out to me. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'll be right here to help you guys, you know? And I've helped the Toro Brothers already along the way as we speak now, you know. When they let me walk out, yeah. Um, and I got into my car, I started crying, mm. right? I called Amy, like goosebumps were up. Like I felt his presence there, mm. you know? Yeah. And I'm calling, I'm crying. I was like, babe, I'm no longer a Latin King. And she's like, what, you did it? You're okay? You know, because you thought the worst. Yeah, who knew? Yeah. I said, I'm fine, babe. I was like... I'm no longer, uh, the chains are broken because of the Chris Tomlin song. Yeah. In the beginning that I said. Wow. I wow. said, my, the chains are broken, babe. The chains are broken. I'm no longer bounded. You know what I'm saying? I'm free. I was like, now, when people talk about really being spiritually free, I know what it feels like. Right, you know what right, I mean? Like, yeah. And I hope if anybody that's out there that ever watches this, like, you know when you're free. Yeah. When you're no longer bound yeah. to sin, bound to that kind of lifestyle. Uh, those chains were gone. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, they were gone, and I was just like, I was crying, and I was like, I'm free. That's all I kept saying is, I'm free. Wow. You know? Wow. So, now, uh, we speak about things that are happening now. Uh, I'm actually now an executive director for Frontline Street Intervention, uh, and what that looked like right now during COVID, I'm not going to be lying, yeah. lie, and it's sloppy right now. You know, sure, things sure. are messed up, and uh, we're trying to get things back uh, going. But pre-COVID, uh, before it hit us last year, um, we have uh, we had a Bible study with Holy Homies, which is uh, just a, a, a cool. We can have a Bible study one week, game night one night. You know, just a way to get the kids from the community, from the streets, to come in and hang out with us. Yeah, you know, yeah. and to learn some scripture, learn some of God's word, and disciple uh, them. Yes, you know? yeah. G Life is the one we had our. I think was one of since I've been um, there, executive director. I think G Life has been one that's been more me because I like the outreach part of it more. Sure, yeah. Of going to these neighborhoods going to where these basketball courts are and just getting to know the kids in the community, the people, the guys, the women in the community. And uh, believe it or not, like, as we speak now, like, mind you, I've known a lot of these kids and they were 12, 13 years old. Mm -hmm. So we've grown. These kids were tough. They didn't even want to even talk to me before. They would look at me like I was just garbage, you know? Like, okay, this guy's got glasses. He's a nerd, you know? To where now these kids understand their lives. These kids understand what we're trying to do, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, fast forward now, two, three other kids, but one we just had a fight. But um, <laughs> you know, not not our bad stuff. But he moved. Sure. Uh, but two of the other kids have gotten jobs already. They're eighteen years old, graduated high school. Yeah. You know, and how do we help kids? You know what I'm saying? Like it's one thing, you know, you know something we call at, at the front line. We call it life on life. Yeah. 
Yeah. Not just when you want. Not yeah. just going to church on a Sunday and that's it. No. Yeah. Not not How just about, around a program yes. or an event. Yes. Yeah. Continuously. Yeah. You know. I reached out to them, been chatting with them. You know, how's life? How's things going? They even came and brought me when I was sick at the, uh, with COVID, sick, almost dying. Yeah. They brought me food. You know. Yeah. Um, but it's just because God has put those people in your past, our past, and we've grown together. Yeah. You know, we've lived a life on life, and I was able to get two of them recently jobs with me. And like I said, they're 18, graduated high school, looking for jobs. And I was like, man, I was like, why not? Yeah. You know, why yeah. not give these kids an opportunity that others won't give them? Yeah, yeah. You know? And they're not still they're able to do life with you yes, in another exactly, context. Exactly, right there. Yeah. You know, now I get to teach them life skills of cleaning. Yeah. You know, and here's the work ethic. You know? Like, yeah. I've seen you in your personal life. Now, here's yeah. the professional life. Yeah. And even spiritually wise, man. you know, like being yeah. able to speak to them. So it's cool. When you get to see the the young ones grow, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, that that's the most amazing part of it, you know. But there are the ones that you see that have wandered off. Yeah. And those are the ones that hurt too. Sure. You know, because what do you think? Well, sometimes what could he have done different? Should I have reached out more? You know. Um, but who knows what God's plans are for that person and that time that kid, you know, or the kids or people that we meet. But um, yeah, so a lot of positive things are happening. Uh, we do plan to obviously get more stuff going now with frontline. Uh, but obviously, this pandemic stuff and. Um, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's it's it's, it's still there. wreaking havoc. Yeah. No, yes, it is. Yeah. So um, so you've you've enjoyed um, uh, ministry with Frontline for a while. Um, you've been able to be a part of yeah. the Unshackled Network and what we're doing. Um, so those are some of like the things that that really excite you in yeah. ministry. What about what about some of your greatest challenges? Maybe not going to too many, but like yeah. pick one. What would be a thing that you would say? Maybe not necessarily just an event, but yeah. like what's something that's a challenge in ministry for you? Yeah. And maybe not just ministry, just a challenge. Yeah. I, I, um, a maybe. challenge would be, I, I don't know, like to be honest, I think a challenge is working the full time job, yeah. trying to do That's why when I see your schedule, you know, yeah. like how do you do that? You know? <laughs> because that's the biggest challenge is, you know, I got four kids, I yeah. got the wife, you know, she lets me do whatever I need to do ministry wise if yeah. I have to do it. You know, but then there's always the challenge of, you know, you have to make sure your house is good. Right, first, right. You know? Yeah. If my house ain't good, how am I going to be out Absolutely. doing anything else, you know? Absolutely. So that's one of the biggest challenges. As you get kids that are turning teenagers, they're going off into the world and figuring things out, yeah. you know? Um, so that's a big challenge um, itself. Yeah. Um, in herself, you know? Um, I struggle. I struggle with that still, too, if I'm yeah. being honest, you know? Yeah. Because there's always the, the thought that... There's um, so much more you could do if you had yeah. more time. Yes. You know what I mean? But yeah. then there's, at the same time, it's like um, the challenge for me right now is to trust God uh, to be able to use the time that I do have yeah. in the way that he is desiring and not just be always wishing I had more time, right. you know? Because then you get the time and he just want to tell you. Anyway. Yeah, right, right, exactly. <laughs> like if one of those yeah. meetings get canceled of mine, and I'm like, yeah. okay, I'm just yeah. going to relax now. You know? Yeah, exactly, you yeah. know. But and also the challenge now in this time era is obviously, like we said, the pandemic. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you, you know, there's the, there's the, I guess you would say a fear of if you prepare all this for the future, mm -hmm. what if it happens again, you know? Right, right. What if you can't progress with it, you know? And that's something, you know, like, and I'm all out for just going all out, but I just don't want to see it tore down. Yeah. You know, and I think that's what hurts, you know, is, you know, seeing something get built up and then tore down and you're just like, man, because the Chewy would just keep doing it whether the government wants it or not. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And that's where the problem would occur. Right. You know, right. and uh, so, yeah. You know, I, so I didn't plan on saying too much, but there was, when you said that, it just triggered something that I was working through yeah uh last week i think it was last week or two weeks ago but this this situation oh you know i was i was in my my triad discipleship group last yeah. wednesday actually literally so this time yeah, oh, <laughs> last week and um i was recognizing that for me and i'm not this isn't yeah. you trying to project this on you but for me i was i was spending so much time and energy Focusing on building things, even yeah. if I look at my calendar, right. like all the things that I like, what has God put on there, and what have I just right. decided I want to do because I want to get this thing done, and and it's for God, yes. like it's a it's a great motivation, but like the visual that was coming to my mind as I was explaining this to these brothers, as I'm just sharing what's going on to me, yeah. was me like building something and only to have it knocked down again. It was right. like it was like I'm 
you know when you're that kid and you're at the beach <laughs> you and you're building this beautiful oh, sand yes. and then like somebody oh. come somebody comes and runs through and knocks down your sand yes. castle? But then what what was what I was struck with was that passage like unless the Lord builds it. Right. It's in yeah, vain. Yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? It's like, yeah. oh, the reason you got the visual of it being a sandcastle, bro, is because, like, that's not meant to last. Right. <laughs> like, it's gonna, it's gonna only, only that that is yes. the rock right. is going to last. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, oh, man, I, do I just spend so much energy building <laughs> yeah. sandcastles right. and then getting so upset yeah. when they, they fall oh, down for man. whatever reason? And that's how I felt. Right, the last, right, right. The last, but the COVID first hit. Yeah. yeah. So um, tell us about the, the beginnings of this frontline street intervention. Yeah. Well, well, through frontline, I ended up hearing about Ricky, but George actually, Chopper actually was like, man, again, here goes one of those. I, for some reason, God keeps putting uh, Ricky into you and Ricky, you and Ricky. Yeah, you know? yeah. And I was like, I knew who Ricky was. He was in the same organization that I was, uh -huh. but I had like some bad kind of blood with him. Oh, okay. Of things I've heard. Um, but. We got to able to sit down eventually. Cause I had to call him twice. The first time he ignored me, and then the second time I caught him at the Walgreens, okay. and I just ran up to him, you know. And I was like, "Yeah, you don't remember, but I know you, you know." And uh, we sat down and we we chopped it up and we talked. And I said, "Look, I just want to do what you're doing. I hear so much that you're doing good in the community. Yeah, that's what I, that's where my heart is. That's what I want to do." And he was like, "All right, well, come along, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm glad that you come. We have the holy homies. That's where I, we got it from. Yeah. Uh, and believe it or not, like it's a growing process." You know, for the young believers, like, get plugged in, man. Like, I was just listening to Ricky preach, and I was, at the end of the our pizza thing, we had to eat pizza during our, our thing, mm -hmm. I would clean up. Right. You know, like, I went from cleaning up, you know, uh, putting books away, putting the Bibles yeah, away. Doing whatever was needed. Um, yes, you know, and uh, being a servant. Yeah. You know, and um, I got to learn and grow. Yeah. You know, he became a mentor. Yeah. He was one of my mentors as well, you know, and we just grew. And that's what I say, you have to... Surround yourself around good brothers, yeah. good sisters, man, in order to grow as well. So, Chewy, um, so you, you've been a part of the Unshackled Network for a while. What drew you to the network, and what are some of the things that you enjoy about being a part of it? You know what I really, what really appears my heart was you wanted to start something different, mm. you know? Yeah. Like, you've reached out to different brothers, different sisters from different walks of life. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And... Uh, when we look at, you know, uh, a church, you know, sometimes people just think of a building, mm. small building, big building, you know, but this was something different. Mm. This was something like, hey, you are the church, you know, say we are the church. How, if there's something you enjoy doing, mm -hmm. drinking coffee, well, let's build a, a church, a church coffee thing, you know. We yeah, got yeah. Go, oh, you, you do basketball outreach? All right, let's, how can we help you, you know? Right. Um, so right through the door. That's what drew me to Unshackled mm -hmm. was just being different. Yeah. You know what I mean? Truly, though, there's one thing saying it yeah. and there's another thing doing it. Right. You right. know, and, you know, beats, bars, and Bible, you know, yeah. kids like music, men like music, women like music. Come on through, you know what I'm saying? Hear yeah. some sounds, read some scripture, you know, uh, you know, and it's a church. Yeah. You know, I think a lot of times we blinded ourselves on what the big what church, the church, what the church look like, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, to where... We can have the church in our backyard, as we were saying. You know, Absolutely. we can have it right here in front of us. Yeah. You know, I I I love uh, that. That's what drew you in because that for me was the thing that the Lord was kind of breaking me free from yeah. the understandings I had of what the church was, and and that was the journey that He brought me on yeah. as I was imagining what the network could be, and we came to this understanding that it's just simply at the intersection of worship, community in mission right. where it's like if you've got a group of people and you are looking to point to jesus right. and you're calling more people to that same journey yeah. that's that's the mission right that's the church and it can look like any number of things yes. it can look like basketball it can look like yeah. beats like like actually in this room yeah. is where beats bars and yeah. bible started actually yeah. right? it, it can look like any number of things and and, and it doesn't have to be in a building right. with a pulpit right. where someone gives a sermon this long, you say this, yeah, you know, that, yeah, it, it, it's so beautiful to see the Lord setting us free, yes, on what it means you to know? be the church. And I think, to, like you say, beautiful, like it is, yeah, you know, because I think sometimes we get too comfortable and too stuck, yep, you know, yep. and what, what it should look like, like, man, and we're go getters, you know, how yeah. we are, you know, like we, 
we'll go, we'll rise up at any time, help out anybody anytime. And Unshackled, like, when you look at Unshackled, man, just say the word itself. Right, right. Unshackled, you know yeah. what I mean? We're free. <laughs> like, we're, free. we're free, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, yeah. you know, the thing is more is, how do we help others be free as well? Amen. Amen. You know what I mean? Like, yep. We can't lose sight of the mission. We can't yes. lose sight of that mission. You know, and even just seeing it grow as it's been growing now, being a part of it, you know, um, obviously, yes, I was MIA for a bit, you know, but... Hey, man, we um, all went through a thing. <laughs> but you have to look at what's already been happening. Yeah, yeah. You know, and the people that is reaching and yeah. the people that is going to reach, you know. Yeah. And God's got more planned. I mean, we were just talking oh, that yeah. there's global thoughts coming, so... We don't know what God's going to do, but I'm excited to be on this journey with you, my brother. Um, It's been such a huge blessing to know you, to be able to to watch you. Um, You saw the very beginning stages. Oh my gosh, man. (laughs) But but what's been so great about all of it, even as you've been growing, like... Um, the change hasn't been at the core about the the joy that I just yeah. see you. Like you've always been yeah. a people guy, yeah. and like wanting wanting people to feel um, loved, yeah. and like the love that you thought you were, were getting at the yeah. at the gang life. Now yeah. you want to make sure people get the real thing right. as you engage with yes. them everywhere you go. And, and that that's, love that's awesome. is Jesus's unconditional love. Come on, that's, you know, that's like, the only love. That's the, the only real love. Unconditional love. You yeah, know what I mean, like yeah. <laughs> Amen. Until you really know that, you know, man. I, <laughs> and you think, and the the, the <laughs> truth is, and we've been there. Yeah. Like you think you know what yeah. love is. Until you experience it, and then you're like, yeah. "Oh, I had no yeah. idea. Yeah. I had no idea." So, um, so we've talked a little bit about life and ministry yeah. and your freedom story and the challenges, even. So, what are some of those things that just like if you're, we talk about, you know, when you have yeah. time and you, sometimes you just want to like relax and breathe <laughs> if you can make time. Amy ain't gonna like that. <laughs> she don't really? like it to our bedroom. <laughs> so, what what do you do for fun? For fun, I love to collect cards. Yeah, sports cards, all type of sports cards, whether it's soccer, baseball, football, basketball. I even get ah uh, whatever. You yeah, know? Uh, I'll, I'll buy whatever. If I see it, I can get it. I'll probably grab it. So you had, you've been it. telling me a little bit about this last weekend. So yeah. how long you've been collecting sports cards? Well, I've been collecting sports cards since I was a kid, mm-hmm. but my brother somehow lost all my cards, <laughs> so I don't have none of them no more. Yeah. Um, so I lost everything I've ever owned as a oh. kid. Um, but back in what, 2000, uh, Junior was only five years old, four years old. Um, I worked for a couple, um, uh, doing cleanouts. Mm-hmm. And, uh, well, I remember one day this guy, the, the boss, he was like, Hey, Chewie, there's some cards in the cabinet. If you want to grab them, they're yours. You know, I don't got time for that little kid stuff. Right. He said the bad word, you know? Sure, sure. And I was like, all right, cool. And I went in there and I grabbed, I grabbed, I grabbed some of the cards. I only bought a couple of them. There's a show, but, and uh, I was like, okay, so I, I grabbed the cards and I look inside, I'm like, Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan, I was like, what, what did this guy just give me? So I ran to my car, right. I ain't gonna lie, I ran to my car, put him in there, <laughs> put him in the house, helped him move out the sofas, whatever needed to be moved out, and I took off, you wow. know, well, he didn't know at that time what was in those boxes, yeah. but I did years later, um, a lot of cards that were in there were graded Kobe Bryant's. Rookie cards. Wow. Rookie um, cards. Rookies. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, how, so generally speaking, how much is one of those? Well, this? um, at this time it was only like 50 bucks. Oh, at that but, time? Yes. Yeah. But, now, but I mean, that was years ago. Now, even just this base Bowman, rookie Bowman best. Yeah. This one's an easy four to $600 card now. Wow. You know? Wow. And then this is Michael Jordan. It's a gold one and it's a PSA 10. So, Bro, I had best. that card. It's the best card you oh, can let me get. Let see this. It's the best card that you can get. Um, graded at that level from that company. Wow. Uh, so see, this is a nine. Oh, I'll, I'll put them up there. <laughs> I'll put them on the screen later. So yeah, he, and mind you, I got a card at home, but I don't have it in a protective case. Yeah, yeah So yeah. I didn't bring it. Sure, which but, is smart. Um, I didn't even that remember that he was drafted home, by the Hornets. <laughs> yeah, that one card I got at home, it's a, like a $1,600 card. Wow, you know, wow. It's called the Kobe Bryant Air. Okay. But it's a beautiful card, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then another cool uh, card I got is on Facebook and my friends we have they have auctions and I ended up getting this card. Hopefully he plays this year and is a beast. But um I got it for eight dollars. Okay. this card is like valued now at three hundred uh, three to five hundred dollars and it's a Jacob Eason. Oh okay. autograph. 
Yeah. Well, I mean, if, so he's with the Colts right now? Yes. I don't even know. So he might actually play because... Yes, uh, yes because... They Wentz, have been, Wentz yeah, is hurt. Wentz is hurt right now. They say yeah. he might, but they don't know for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but they also got that other guy they're trying to put in, Sam Ellinger. Oh, like really? New draft. Pick. Oh, okay, okay. They better not. <laughs> they might. That card so I can sell it. Right, right, right. need him to play. Yeah. And then... As soon as it, as soon as it goes up, you're like, okay, now it's time to go. <laughs> and then these two are Justin Herbert's. Yeah, he's a cool, a cool, cool, quick story is I already had one. And I joined a break, which means people, you pick teams, they give you teams. Oh, and, and any cards Harvard, that they pull. Yes, from that. Oh, I've heard about well, that. the guy never sent me my cards. He robbed me. He sent me a whole bunch of them, but he never sent me one of them. And I already have one at home. Uh -huh. And I have a, a good friend of mine, Andrew. Um, he's got a card thing on Facebook. Called, I have eBay called Bubblegum and Leather. Uh -huh. He actually bought me the card, bro. Because wow. he felt bad. Because I'm a good person, just like yeah. I am. I'm good with these brothers, you know. They know I believe. They know the uh, outreach ministry is all part yeah, of. Yeah. Um, and they're like, man, I can't believe somebody did you like that, brother. He went out of his own pocket, one hundred fifty dollars. Wow. He's got the one hundred fifty dollars online. Wow. Just without the casing, though. You know? Sure, yeah, and I'm sure it's gonna. And oh, you went and got, you got it graded. I sent them both. Oh, nice. I nice. sent them both because I didn't want to know which one he sent me and which one he's. <laughs> right. So now right. I say he gave me the ten. There you go. You know there you I mean? go. But yeah, I already had one. And he, him, and then two other brothers helped pitch in for the rest of it. That's good. And he's you know? good, so that's yeah. gonna keep going up and for this sure. Is a special one. This one has stars on it. If you look at it, it has stars on it. So it's oh, called nice. Starlight. It's not your regular base card. Nice, nice. And then this card, this next card, real quick, is um. Uh, it's not nothing fancy or nothing too big and special, but I knew you said you wanted a Justin Fields, so I brought you one. For me? Yeah. Oh, snap! You know, like I said, it's not the biggest one. You know oh, but I mean? the, oh, man. I so you, you to have a you're going to make so, me cry. You know? This is dope. Yeah, but now they're going to got to bring this brother. Uh, Donruss, Justin Fields, rookie. So that was one of my doubles. That, <laughs> hey, man. I, <laughs> praise I God. Thank you, double, man. Uh, oh, that means a lot. That means a lot, know, man. But I was like, yeah. So, yeah, I love cards. You know, cards are, they're fun. A quick way to escape, you know what I mean? Yeah. And meet other people, man. And, uh, um, man, it's fun. And plus, yeah. I don't have a retirement to leave my kids behind. This is your so retirement. Is yeah, that's the legacy. Hopefully, these guys make it big, you know what I mean? And if yeah. they do, you know, and I got tons of cards. I got <laughs> thousands and thousands and thousands of cards. I heard tornadoes were coming last night. Yeah. I went and grabbed my, my best boxes. I said, they're flying with me. Oh, I'm going in the van and they're coming with me. Describe the picture for us, because uh, I'll put it up on the video. Yeah. So describe it right now. I'll put it up right now. Five, five, six boxes on top of the kitchen table ready to roll with What's me. in each one of these boxes? Every beautiful card that I Oh, own. so you literally packed everything up. Every I'm like, beautiful. if we got to Because I saw, I saw after every the fact a, ma a message or a chain where you were like, wait, tornado, what? Every I got a bunch of cards. Card. Is that when you went, yeah. boxed them all up? Yeah. As soon as... As soon as uh, as soon as I freaking seen that uh, there might be the tornadoes. tornado was coming, I was like, nope, you ain't finna get, nope, this ain't gonna happen right now. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I freaking packed them all and had Jalen and Junior, like, the wind was ready. 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 <laughs> uh, no, we get these. And Amy's like, who cares about the cards? And Junior, like, Junior's I, like, no, Junior's like, Papa, that's a, this card, these cards are worth more than all of us right now, you know what right, I'm saying? Right. <laughs> Everything we own. Junior's like, that's <laughs> my legacy, right? There. <laughs> that's my inheritance you messing with. <laughs> you know? That's um, great, man. Yeah, I mean, it's it's fun, but you know, like, man, like it, it is an investment, you know. What yeah, I mean? like, yeah. Something that who knows what what that can look like, you know, in the yeah. future. Well, I appreciate you investing yeah. some time uh, with me tonight and with all those watching. Before we let you go, um, is there somewhere we can direct people if they want to get connected with you or with the ministry? Where should they go? Well, with the ministry, with Frontline, they can just go to, you can Google it, Frontline Street Intervention. Frontline Street Intervention, is it .com, .org? I think it's .org. I think it's .org. Frontline Street Intervention .org. Yeah. .org. Yeah. Okay. I know we were doing some work in the, uh, a while back. Yeah, there, yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, uh, that's the only really, uh, uh, sure. we have Facebook. You can find us on Facebook at Frontline Street Adventure as well. Um, but that's it, that's the only two platforms we have. And uh, if you guys uh, want to hear more about Chewy's story, uh, leave a comment below and I'm sure you find some, some time to probably connect with you because oh, yeah. he's a people guy. He really loves that. <laughs> right. And we love you, man. We really thank appreciate you, it, man. Uh, thank you so much for giving us some time here. Yep, thank you. Hey, well, I hope you enjoyed today's conversation. If you're listening via audio podcast, make sure you subscribe wherever you listened and make sure that you share that with a friend. And do the same if you're watching, whether it be on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, wherever else you're catching this. Make sure you like it 
make sure you follow and hey, leave us a comment. We would love to continue to be in conversation with you and help connect you with more, not only inspiring stories, but some of the brands that we create here through Freedom Story Media, where we are all about helping you live a life of freedom and joy. Be blessed and be a blessing.